from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And good morning, I'm Lauren Casey. The time right now is 427. Thanks for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana to kick off your work week. Several stories to talk about today before we get into the show, starting with a big day for Indianapolis Public Schools. Students are returning to school this year starting today, and it's all going to be done entirely virtually for the start of the school year. We know that district spent more than $12 million on devices and hotspots for students who didn't have internet access to help them be able to learn virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we are already learning about some software issues that they are having starting this week. They're hoping to get that fixed. We're going to be breaking down what you can expect if you are a parent with a child in the school district. And we'll also be talking about some other districts going back today that is coming up here on our show. Taking a turn now to the latest on the coronavirus in the state of Indiana. As of yesterday at the lunch hour, the State Department of Health reported 750 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of positive cases since back in March to more than 80,000. We also tracked three new deaths across the state yesterday, bringing the death toll for this virus to more than 2,900. Of course, we'll keep you updated on those numbers. What you need to know is we have about an 8.9% positivity rate as of today. We do want to take a turn right now to our forecast. Todd Klassen is standing by from home. Todd, good morning to you. Wow, last night was beautiful outside. Hopefully you got a <laughs> chance to get outside and enjoy it. Yeah, you know, it was beautiful not only last night, but yesterday it was pretty seasonable with the sunshine out there and the low humidity. And Lauren, I really think you're going to like the forecast and everybody else here across central Indiana, not only today, but for this entire week. We'll get more into the extended forecast in just a little bit. Well, let's take a look at what's going on right now. And outside, temperatures are sitting in the 60s. 61 in Logansport, 66 in Kokomo, 63 in Muncie. The radar is completely quiet there in the center of your screen, and that's the way it's going to stay here through a good chunk of the day today. We'll build in some fair weather clouds later on this afternoon, but overall we are looking at mostly sunny skies. Another comfortable day for us with a high temperature of 85 degrees and just a really, really small chance, probably about a 10% chance of a stray shower sneaking in here later in the day. It should not impact your day, though, much at all. So carry on with any plans you may have. As I mentioned, more on the extended forecast, which is a real beauty coming up in just a little bit, Lauren. All right, Todd, looking forward to that. We do want to take you down to Johnson County this morning. Franklin Community Schools opening today with a hybrid schedule, so a number of their kids are going to be going back in person today. So Rafael Sanchez talked to folks with the Transportation Department, bus drivers, about what they're doing to keep kids safe. That's coming up here on Good Morning Indiana. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. I imagine this first nine weeks is going to be a lot of that, like us trying out things and when it works great, when it doesn't, we communicate it back out so that families know what to expect. Today, Indianapolis Public Schools will welcome students back to class virtually. Now at 430, a look at what the district has prepared. Plus, an Indianapolis mother will be speaking at this week's Democratic National Convention, how she's turning tragedy into triumph on the national stage. And an emotional day at the track as 33-year-old Andretti, the 33-year Andretti drought, rather, with Marco winning the pole. Our day first will have the very latest from the Speedway. But first, let's take a turn right now to our forecast and welcoming you in here to Good Morning Indiana. Todd, you say we are going to like this week's forecast, so let's get right to it. You know, it's one of the better forecasts I think you can find for the month of August, Lauren, here in central Indiana, at least over the past few years. This week's really going to shape up to be a very nice one for us. So start making those outdoor plans now as far as uh, this morning goes. As you take a live look in Bloomington right now, 65 degrees is the current temperature. Just a light wind out of the southwest at 8 miles per hour. And temperatures here all across central Indiana are sitting in the 60s. 64 in Lafayette as well as Peru. 66 is the current temperature in Bloomington. And Muncie is sitting at 63 degrees. The humidity is pretty low. It's very, very comfortable. The clouds have cleared out. Any rain is going to stay off to our west for the most part here throughout the course of the day today. So as you get going on uh, this Monday morning as we kick off the new work week, look at all that sunshine into the 70s by 9 a.m. into the 80s by the noon hour. 
We'll talk about the rest of the forecast for you coming up in just a little bit, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic right now as you're heading out on the roads to kick off your work week and your Monday. Here's a look right now on the near east side at I-70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue. You can see all lanes in this spot are open. Traffic is traveling up to speed. Right now, I'm not monitoring any crashes around the metro area, so that is great news for your morning commute. Today, Indianapolis Public Schools will welcome students back 100% virtually, and there's already a potential glitch in the system. Last night, the district said an error in the software used for remote classes could prevent students from fully interacting with their teachers. The district says it's working to update all accounts and expects to have everything back up and running normally by Tuesday. To prepare for remote learning, the district spent about $12 million for all students to receive an iPad or Chromebook, a wireless internet device was also given to families who do not have home access. Well, last week, sites were announced where students could receive free all-day care while they access IPS e-learning. IPS is also providing physical space at their school buildings for students who qualify for homeless assistance and physical and cognitive special needs. 3,000 backpacks full of school supplies are now in the hands of children right here in Marion County. A back-to-school drive through giveaway was held this weekend on the north side. ML and Trip Mentoring Outreach Center, Marion County DCS, and several other organizations came together to triple their normal efforts. In years past, they handed out around 1,000 backpacks. This year, they know the need is even greater during the pandemic. COVID has changed the need because where our scholars were at school and were able to get supplies through their teachers, that has been taken away with COVID because they're at home. So our goal today was to make sure that we're definitely supporting our virtual learners, that they have the supplies that they needed. Some people it's hard to get school supplies in the situations they're in. I really wanted to give back to them instead of just sitting at home and doing nothing. McFarland Food also donated food to families in need, and Prairie Farms provided 1,500 gallons of milk. ML and Trip Mentoring credited their partnerships with IPS, Warren Township, and Eskenazi Heartbeat, among others, for making that giveaway possible. Turning now to the latest on how the coronavirus pandemic is impacting Hoosier lives, the State Department of Health confirming, confirming 750 new cases on Sunday. That brings the total number to 80,415 since the start of the pandemic. Three new COVID-19 deaths were also reported. 2,924 Hoosiers have died from the virus so far. More than 906,000 people have been tested for COVID-19. About 8.9% of those tests have come back positive. Well, the Democratic National Convention is kicking off today, and as the election approaches, given the ongoing pandemic, issues surrounding the U.S. Postal Service took center stage over the weekend. There are new calls for the newly appointed Postmaster General to resign amid concerns over mail-in ballots. ABC's Inez de la Cotera is in Washington now with the latest. It's one of the biggest political events of the campaign season. The Democratic National Convention kicking off tonight with a We the People theme, featuring a slate of speakers tailored to address the three big crises now facing the nation, the coronavirus pandemic, the ongoing economic crisis, and the national reckoning over racial injustice. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, Bernie Sanders, and others all slated to speak. This as the battle over how to handle the upcoming election intensifies. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi taking the dramatic step of calling the chamber back to Washington for a rare session this weekend to deal with the unfolding crisis at the U.S. Postal Service. Democrats calling on the Postmaster General to resign, accusing Louis DeJoy, a Trump ally and GOP donor, of trying to silence millions of voters. We've got to do everything we can to get rid of this new a postmaster general who was clearly a campaign contributor for Trump trying to undermine uh, the Postal Service. Democratic lawmakers also demanding DeJoy testify before Congress after cutting back on costs and overtime, resulting in a mail slowdown just months before Election Day. Our elections are sacred. Men and women have died for them and the right to vote. And to do this is disgraceful. The Washington Post reporting attorneys general from at least six states are considering legal action to protect the Postal Service as soon as this week. The president defending DeJoy. Yeah, he's a fantastic man. He wants to he wants to make the post office great again. As his administration insists, without evidence, that mail-in voting leads to voter fraud. Universal mail-in voting is going to be catastrophic. 
Do you realize how inaccurate the voter rules are? Funding for the post office is now on hold. 46 states and Washington, D.C. have already been warned that ballots may not be delivered in time to be counted. Inez De La Quatera, ABC News, Washington. At 437, one of the speakers at this week's DNC will be an Indianapolis mother. Deandra Dykus founded the group Purpose for My Pain after her son was shot at a birthday party back in 2014. He was only 13 at the time and left paralyzed. Since then, Dykus has worked to put a stop to gun violence in our city, and now her message will reach a national stage. I say that I am honoring Dre's fight for survival. And, you know, I made him that promise, and I'm just standing on my word to my son. But beyond that, you know, this is so much bigger than me and Dre. We can talk until we're blue in the face, but if you're not being boots on the ground, if you're not advocating for legislation change, then it's all null and void. And so with this new administration coming in, we're looking for, um, we're looking for policy change. Well, we asked Dykus how she was chosen to speak at the convention, and she said organizers found her through every town for gun safety. The time for her speech has not been finalized yet, but we'll let you know once it is confirmed. The dreaded Andretti curse could be a thing of the past. On Sunday, Marco Andretti edged out Scott Dixon to win the poll. It was just two years old the last time his racing family led the field to, to the green at the 500 33 years ago. Sports Director Dave First and Tony Kanon give us a recap of all the action. WRTV trackside wrapping things up here on poll day 2020. You had a little drama. Well, I mean, that's what Fast 9 is all about, right? Building drama. It's always going to be a drama when you put, you know, nine guys trying to get <laughs> the pole at the 500. So, And it came down to a couple guys you know pretty well, and Marco Andretti uh, and I Scott mean, Dixon. How close that was. I mean, what was that? Basically, how, how, a, basically a hundredth of a second. It, when you talk about... After four laps. After four laps. It's like, it, it's crazy. If, if we actually... I would love to show the viewers if you transform the speed right. and lap time, hey. you wouldn't believe how close <laughs> was that. So, but honestly, they're really happy for Marco. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. been trying 33 years that Andretti yeah. was on the pole here. Dixon put up a big, fast speed. He so. was my he was my pick, by the way. I well, mean, and you thought because of how he did after it, yesterday, he was going to lock it up. But Marco Andretti went out and put together maybe the four best runs of his career. 100%, and that's what it takes to be on the pole for the 500. So uh, I will tell you that when I was on the pole here in 05, I put the best four laps of my career. So that's what it takes, and uh, it was really exciting. Too bad uh, we couldn't have the fans here to watch yeah. this because the, it was it was a while. Brian Hurd told me afterwards, and they can see the telemetry on the pit stand about how much he's moving that, that steering wheel. It he was, was moving an awful lot of laps. And forward. if you look at his teammates, right, they obviously, as a team, probably started with the same car, same setup. They all fast. They went to three, four yesterday, and they, they their teammates didn't do anything. And then Marco pulled it out. Congratulations, Marco Andretti. Let's hear from him. Lap one was good. Lap two started giving me the hint that uh, three and four were going to be tough. So um, I was sliding definitely more than than Scotty looked like he was sliding. So um, yeah, I had to work there, especially the last lap. I knew. Uh, it was going to be interesting. I knew it was going to be close, too, because I was watching the, the speeds, and I knew what he ran. So the luxury of going last is you kind of know the, the benchmark, right? So luckily, we were just on the better end of that. So take a look at the front row. The race, of course, a week from today. Marco with his first Andretti pull since 1987. Scott Dixon in the middle of row one. And Takuma Sato. No one expected to see Sato in the front row. Either. No, but, I mean, that's you know that shows you. The guy won here already, and he's going to be, he's going to be fast. A couple, nice couple hour practice afterwards. How was your day? Once you get the boost down, back to a race trim. We re equalized the engines for sure. I mean, I was really happy with the race car. I think that half an hour to the end, we did a couple pit stops, and I didn't feel like I was going to gain much more as far as changes. We went through the changes, and we gained a lot. So I'm happy. I have a good race car. It's going to depend. Who the track's going to pick to win on August 23rd? You've always said that. It's not the driver that chooses. It is nope, the track it's the that chooses track, the so. winner. We'll see what happens. Countdown is on. The race a week from today. For Tony Kanan, I'm Dave First, WRTV Trackside. All right. Thank you there, Dave. And, of course, uh, Tony. And we had great weather yesterday for the Fast Nine. And we're going to carry that nice weather over into your forecast here for the day today. There's a few showers off to our west. 
We'll talk about those in the stretch of weather that I think you're really, really going to like here for the middle of August. It's all coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast when Good Morning Indiana continues. Welcome back. This morning, authorities in Bloomington are investigating an apparent triple drowning at Lake Monroe. This happened around 1030 Saturday night at the Paintown boat ramp. Witnesses say they heard a driver call out for help as a vehicle began to sink, but they weren't able to get to the victims in time. Two adults, a male and a female, were pronounced dead at the scene. A young boy was taken to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The names of the victims have not been released yet, and it's unclear how they were related. Up in South Bend, a nine-year-old boy is dead after an apparent accidental shooting. This happened early Sunday morning. Investigators believe the gun went off while the boy and other children were at the home playing with the weapon. No arrests have been made in this case and no charges have been filed. An autopsy is scheduled for today. Well, firefighters across three western states are still battling wildfires that have destroyed thousands of acres and displaced hundreds of people. Fires are raging in California, Oregon, and Colorado. Out in Colorado, the crews are hoping to use some new technology to combat the flames. Sloan Dickey has more. The fight against wildfires. This system is called the Team Awareness Kit. Has entered the 21st century. It is truly like Google Maps for a wildland firefighter. Now for the first time, we're deploying it across a fire. The Team Awareness Kit, or TAC for short, was developed by the Air Force for combat warfare. You can see here in pink, this was new fire growth that this aircraft mapped. Adapted now to combat flames. We're able to see exactly where the fire is burning, see where our firefighters are, and get intelligence in real time on the behavior and activity of the fire. Developers are deploying this technology for the first time in a major wildland operation at the Grizzly Creek Fire, giving them real-time eyes on the ground. Each dot is a firefighter. In the sky, there is an enormous amount of math and science that goes into being able to put video onto the surface of the earth. And in the wild, as the fire expands. We're giving um, each crew, um, each uh, boss that's out in the field, a phone so they can see this information. Giving emergency crews data that would have taken hours to collect. This is currently in real time. In a matter of seconds. It's really just about um, improving the current way of operations. As fire crews battle back nature. Truly made it military grade. The future of technology helps them plan. Well, a number of studies have tied increasing CO2 emissions and rising temps to a high number of average burning across the western U.S., particularly out in California. So for the first time in nearly two decades, officials in that state have ordered rolling power outages. The goal is to ease the burden on the grid, but this leaves many without air conditioning as a heat wave sweeps across the west. At 447, let's take a look back here at home in central Indiana, and Todd has a great forecast to kick off our work week. Yeah, not only for today, Lauren, but also this entire week is going to be really nice weather-wise. In fact, today is probably one of the warmer days that we will see uh, this week. So we're going to kind of settle into a little bit of a below-normal pattern here for highs and lows as we go into Wednesday and a Thursday. But let's talk about today first. How great was the weather yesterday for qualifications there at IMS? And IMS all lit up here this morning, looking great. They should look into turn one there and the American flag. Obviously pretty quiet on the track right now, but as we uh, get growing for some practice later on today, they should be in great shape as well. Look at the temperatures this morning. We're in the 60s anywhere you go. 65 Bedford, 62 Richmond, Greencastle at 65 degrees, and Tipton and Muncie sitting at 63. Uh, the, over the course of the next couple days, I think we'll probably be able to work some 50s in here for some overnight lows. As far as the satellite radar picture goes, you don't see much of anything out there right now. As we expand out, there's just a few areas where you see a few specks of uh, rain up to the north in Michigan. There's one little shower. Then there's a few more back across parts of Wisconsin. Our rain chances aren't completely zero for the day today, and I'll show you in just a second. Uh, but they are going to be rather or low for us as we get into the evening hours. So temperatures will go through the 70s this morning. We're around 80 degrees by the noon hour. Our high temperature, 83 to 85 degrees for you later on this afternoon with skies that will be mostly sunny all across uh, the area. 
But watch what happens on TrueCast as we get into uh, the late afternoon, early evening hours. A little bit in the way of cloud cover will start to build this afternoon. And then I would say after 5 p.m., there'll be the chance of just a stray shower here and there across the area. And most of these will probably hold off on until after sunset. So that's why I don't really think it impacts your day much at all. And when these showers do roll through, they're all going to be very light and they'll be very brief. And uh, I don't really think they'll cause much of an issue whatsoever as you kind of plan out your evening hours. So I'll throw that stray shower in for you starting at 9 p.m. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies with sunset uh, later on this evening at 8.38. Overnight, temperatures will dip down into the 50s in Peru, as well as Lafayette and Muncie. Mid-60s still from Bloomington to Columbus. The humidity is going to be really low, so it's a very comfortable overnight period and a great start to our day tomorrow. It'll be a beautiful morning to get out for a walk or a bike ride. And then look at the sunshine tomorrow with high temperatures that are probably going to be in the upper 70s for most of us. The city, only because it usually runs a little bit warmer, uh, could get close to 80 degrees tomorrow. But overall, it's just going to be spectacular. When Wednesday, we're in the 50s as well to start your day, as well as Thursday morning and Friday morning with high temperatures eventually by Friday getting back up to right around 85 degrees. Next chance of rain besides that straight shower this evening, probably not until Sunday of next weekend, which unfortunately is uh, the 500, uh, but plenty of time to fine tune that forecast. But the rest of the week, Lauren, absolutely spectacular. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this Monday morning. This is a live look from our in-dot traffic camera over on the west side on I-465 and West Washington Street where traffic is moving along up to speed, both northbound and southbound, as you can see here on our camera. No crashes right now to slow down your commute. Great news if you're heading out the, on the roads early to kick off your work week. Well, a significant number of returning midshipmen at the U.S. Naval Academy have tested positive for COVID-19. That's according to a report from ABC News. Official numbers have not been given due to operational security, but a USNA spokesperson says less than 2% of the population in the main dormitory have tested positive for the virus. The fall semester is set to begin on Wednesday. Instruction will be held both in person and online. Officials say in-person classes will be at half capacity. The Naval Academy has one of the most stringent protections of testing and tracing of any of the U.S. educational institutions. Despite the global pandemic, cruise ships are back up and running in the Mediterranean. The MCS Grand MSC rather Grandiosa is the first ship to test the waters. The seven night cruise is scheduled to stop at several ports around Italy. Now during this voyage, people will not be allowed off the ship onto Italian soil unless they're part of a tightly controlled organized excursion. Last month, fears over potential fresh outbreaks prompted the CDC to extend a no sail order until September 2020. Some cruise lines have gone further, canceling voyages until December or even 2021. The old ice cream song, tr truck song, is getting a new spin. Up next, why the creator of the truck says it's time for a change. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So the old ice cream truck song is getting an update. Wu-Tang Clan founding member RZA teamed up with Good Humor to create a new jingle. The company reached out to the rapper because the original song, Turkey and the Straw, has a racist origin. It was used in the 1800s as part of a minstrel show featuring blackface and included racist lyrics. Good Humor is now calling on all ice cream truck drivers to stop playing Turkey and the Straw and replace it with this new jingle. Take a listen. Well, Good Humor says it has not owned an ice cream truck since the 1970s, but as an industry leader and creator of the original ice cream truck, the company wanted to be a part of the solution on this issue. All right, here at 457, Todd, what can we expect as we head out the door this Monday morning? You know, it's a great forecast, pretty comfortable this morning. We're in the 60s, Lauren, up to 85 for your high later on this afternoon with mostly sunny skies. And then look at those low temperatures as we get into Wednesday, Thursday and Friday morning, all the way down into the 50s. In fact, some of you could be in the low 50s during that stretch of weather, but comfortable in the afternoon with highs up right around 80 degrees and lots of sunshine. Get out there and enjoy the time now is 457. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple of minutes.